Last time on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, here's our long decal after applying it. Here's the Ford Torino after I glued it up in the front. Under the air cleaner, I did this sort of thing. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Wiggy waggy, wiggy waggy. <laughs> now, it actually will let the hood go right down to where it's supposed to be. And now, on to the show. Here's our Torino kit just before it's ready to go to racing. And you can see that wonderful stripe down the side as well as the green wheels and that orange roof line. It sure looks great, doesn't it? There's the streamliner in the back for the rear bumper. And here we come into the rear bumper now with all the blank out panels and the black into the texture grill in the back. Little black spoiler too. And those black window frames there, or the window straps. There we also have the blank out for the door handle. And the only thing that's going to make this a lot better, or actually the only thing we're missing, I should say, are the racing decals. So again, we need numbers, sponsors, and a little bit extra in order to get this ready for the track. But overall, I think I've done really well with getting this thing all corrected and adjusted out. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I placed the window straps 9mm from the window edge. I scraped a rectangular area the length of the rear side marker lights under the rear bumper streamliners and then glued them on. I was going to use the regular radiator hose included in the kit. However, I saw this picture where Richard Petty's Ford used the radiator surge tank. I scraped the paint off the radiator where the hose meets it and glued it to the radiator right there. So it's not glued under here. I also had to cut a curved notch in the bottom of the air cleaner to clear the distributor. There are a few details missing from the NASCAR, like this racing gas cap. In order to fully decorate this car as a NASCAR, I will need to source my decal box. The real cars had numbers on the roof, door, trunk lid, head and taillight covers. They also have lettering on the rear quarter panels that state the type of car, Torino Cobra. Sponsor decals are located on the front fender sides. Cubic inch displacement runs down both sides of the hood. Stealth Bomber 2127 left this comment. The NASCAR teams cut out the package shelf and fabricated a dual hoop upper shock mount that came through the floorboard. The rubber boots to seal the holes opened up for the shocks to run through. They used the glove box in the closed position to house the components also. They had to use a pump for the rear differential that was plumbed to a cooler and the rear of the housing had a pinion with hydraulic hoses. The ones I saw used a pump called Water Puppy. There are good picks online. If you like this show so far, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And now, back to the show. I am still having a little bit of trouble with getting this hood to fit properly, and I do believe it is the air cleaners that are still hitting it, even though I've got the hood where, you know, when you put it on, it does fit well, but it's still just up just a little in these corners. So I've got an idea on how to correct that. So if this works out right, I will use this aluminum paint and I will paint the tops of these round air cleaners because I do believe that's where it's hitting. And then I will put the hood back on while the paint is wet and close the hood up. And then it should give me an imprint as to where it's hitting or an impression on the inside of the hood. Then from there, I can scrape those areas where it's hitting. Here we go. We'll just paint right up there. I'm using the same color, of course, because once the hood gets put down, I can repaint those air cleaners. Okay, here we go. Close that up and push it down. I was going to actually open up the hood and take the hood off and show you this, but my camera batteries conveniently decided to die right at that moment. 
But at any rate, we did get our impression from the paint. And as you can see, it is the front carburetor and it's right up here. But the issue I have is, since I scraped all this out with the knife before, I don't know if there's enough <laughs> thickness of plastic to scrape this area away without going through the actual hood. And that is what I'm afraid of. But now we do have an indication. The other way to do this is with carbon paper, <laughs> if anybody still has that around. Finally, after all that work, I have a nice fitting hood here, and you can see it is flat into all the corners and edges. And in order to do that, I did two things. So first off, I painted those air cleaners like I showed before, and just kept opening the hood and painting them, then closed the hood and found out where it was leaving paint. Then I took this knife blade, you can see it's that curved one, and I just scraped in where that air cleaner was hitting and made a perfect concave circle right there. You can actually see it where my finger is. And I kept doing that technique, paint a little bit, close and test and all that. And now I've got it where it fits nice and flat. And the second thing I did was, yeah, you really got to turn the car over to get that hood off. The other thing I did was take my sanding block here, because I noticed in the corners it was really tight when it closed. So I just sanded it with the sanding block just on the edges just a little bit until it got rid of that tightness in there. So the only thing I have left to do with this model is to fill in where these sink marks are with some putty and sand them out a bit and then paint underneath here. So I guess that's two things. And then I can add the decals onto the car for the third thing, and that should wrap up this build. So after this build, we also still have our stock version of the car, and that one has its own little challenges, which we will address coming up in this video. And just from a street level, there's the hood, and you can see that it is nice and flat on here looks really good. There's my thumb. Now it does still have a little bit of a rock in here, but it's not from hitting anything. I think it's just the curvature of the hood and there might be just a little bit of a warp in it, but it's very slight. Overall, I think it looks pretty good. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Who remembers this great blast from the past? Here we have a sponsor decal sheet from the 1980s with all the different sponsors on it. And I do believe this will look great on my NASCAR Torino. Here we have underneath the hood and I've added some white paint underneath here, just like it would be on the real car. Now all I have to do is let this dry and then apply one more coat just to even it all out because there is still a bit of gray coming up through here. But overall it's looking good. Made sure I did not hit any of the edges of the hood, and I did use a brush to paint this. Here we have the car with a lot of the parts company sponsor decals on the side, and I also have this one for Winston Cigarettes up here. So I've got Moog, Champion, Mallory Ignition, Hearst Shifters, Peak Antifreeze, Valvoline, Holly Carbs, Goodyear, and Bliston Shocks and Suspension. Now to further dress up this car, one of the things that I did get recently are these Gopher Racing decals. And here we've got the gold numbers with a black border. And I also have some gold decals here that don't have the black border. Now I was a little bit worried because this did not have a 428, but I was looking through some of the uh, engine options for the Fords of this year. And the 427 was included as an option, so I think I will use that. Of course, the 426 being a Hemi can't be used. But other than that, these numbers should look great on the model. Big ones for the roof and smaller ones for the door. I also picked up this other decal sheet, which has smaller gold letters and numbers. And they are also outlined in black or not outlined in black. So I can use these for like the name of the driver, as well as the numbers that go on the tail lamps. Here we have our finished 1969 Ford Torino, and you can see just how wonderful this turned out. Those gopher racing decals look really good on there, and they were really nice to work with. 
a um, little bit of warm water and they just came right off the paper like nobody's business. Excellent stuff and I would use them again. Now for the Ford Torino right here, I use those Star Trek letters from the names of the ships. I have a few of those decal sheets, but I had to cut them out individually from the names of the ships. So the F was cut out of Farragut, the O from the hood, the D from the hood, and you know, that sort of thing, and then splice them together. Now the issue with that is there is a little bit of black marks around that R, but I can touch that up with the white white paint I used for the uh, car. The 427 on the hood looks good. So does the Roof 38, which I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, they lay down easily. There's no um, silvering from the decal, you know, film. It's actually, you know, pre-cut very close to the edge. I guess it's not pre-cut, but you know how they lay out decals, right? So I even got these little 38s on there. But they were really difficult to do because what happens is as soon as these get wet, they want to lift and float around, right? So with just a drop of water, both numbers wanted to float away from each other. And they were a little bit complicated to get off the paper because the paper is super thick and these are really thin. But I did get them on there. It didn't take too long to figure that out. But again, it was a matter of getting them in the right place. And then when I went to blot the uh, water out of them, kind of pushed them apart again. So I had to re-soak them a little bit and move them into position. But overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And now we'll take some pictures. next week on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Now, as far as the factory stock version of the kit goes, we have a completely different issue because of the air cleaner. Now, looking right from the top down, I do believe we have 14 millimeters, more or less, to the center of that air cleaner. All right, what actually happened here is I tried to remove the air cleaner and I completely broke off the carburetor and I had to cut the air cleaner off the top of the carburetor. I really glued it on really, really, really nicely. Yes, you've done it right. yes, you've done it right. 